So we will want to write a script, a custom component that we attach to the right and left player controllers. For this, we create a new folder in our root project and call this JS for JavaScript. We're just going to put all JavaScript sources in there. If we right click here and select new JavaScript component and then rename this component to climbing mechanic, then we will next need to make sure that Wonderland Engine knows that we want to use this script file. We do that by going to project settings. If it's not open for you still, go to views project settings that will open reopen this tab and you will find the JS folder already listed. The JS components path that you find here is the default path in the editor installation route. So all default components that are shipped with the editor are found in this path. So make sure you don't delete this. Your personal project paths begin with just simply no slash at all. So JS here, which is listed by default, will already contain your JavaScript file. That means if we go to properties, we would usually find this component in here. And if it does not find it here, we may need to save and reload this project. We do that by control S going to file, open reset and selecting your game. If you, once you reloaded the project, you can again select the left quest controller. And if you add the component here, it will list custom zero. This is not the name that we want. So instead we're gonna double click climbing mechanic, which you find underneath the JS folder. It will open whatever you configured uh, in this case, Windows, your operating system to open JavaScript files with. By default, Windows is configured to try to run JavaScript files. So it might pop up an error here. If this is the case, make sure to right click JS, show in folder, which will open your Windows Explorer. Go to JS, right click and select open with in the bottom here choose another app and then choose whatever you use to uh, edit JavaScript files. You may want to use Atom or Visual Studio. There, for example, is a nice extension for Visual Studio that helps you with snippets for uh, scripting and Wonderland Engine. So we can recommend that. I personally use NeoVim. So that is what you're going to see here. If you have the always use this app to open JS files selected and then hit OK, in the future, you can double click the component here and it will open the correct application. And for me, the file is now opened here in NeoVim. And you will see that this is very similar to a frames API. You call WL register component to tell Wonderland Engine that you want this new custom component to be added to the list. And to make sure that this has a decent name, I'm just gonna change this name to climbing mechanic, I'm going to save and Wonderland Engine will automatically detect that. So if you go back to the editor, uh, select add component, you will then be able to add climbing mechanic instead of custom zero. We do the same thing also for the right quest controller because we want both hands to be able to climb. Currently the init start and update functions do not do anything useful. We're gonna remove their contents and then start to think about what we want to do here. Every frame, we will want to check if the sphere of the controller is overlapping other spheres. So what we need to do is we need access to the collision component that we see here in the editor. And we do that by in start, and I'll get to why in start in a second, just say, this collision is this object get component and then add the name of the component as a parameter. This gives us a reference to the collision component attached to the same object that climbing mechanic is attached to. And we can then go ahead and use this collision to, for example, test for overlaps. And we do that here, for example, by just saying this collision query overlaps, and it will return a list 
of overlapping collision components. So if the overlaps length is larger than zero, that means we now have an overlap that we can work with. And we can test if one of the overlaps that we have is actually one of the grips that uh, we want to collide with. And since we know that all spheres or all axis aligned bonding boxes, all collision components in general, are either connected to a grip or to the other controller, we can just test whether the other controller owns this or whether it's uh, one of the grips. So what we're gonna go uh, ahead and do is we're gonna get our first overlap, call it O, and just use an array access. Now we have o.name to test against. And if o.name starts with, uh, or in this case, sorry, ends with, it makes way more sense because both controllers end with controller. then we are not going to use it and just return out of the update function as if nothing happened. And otherwise, for now, we're just going to log that we are overlapping with a grip. Great. Now, once saving this, um, Wonderland Engine will have automatically repackaged and you will have seen this by the action that's been going uh, on here in the console. That means everything's already active in our quest. So if we go ahead and put on the quest and make sure that our remote debugging is active to see what's going on in the console. So first thing that we notice is it cannot read property ends with uh, of undefined. So we go back to our code to make sure that we didn't make a stupid uh, mistake here. And we notice that uh -huh, overlaps, like I said before, are components. They are not objects, so we cannot directly access their name through uh, .name, but instead we make sure that overlaps here is, for example, called comp for component. And then we access the component's object by using .object, and then we can use .name on this object. Also, if you know JavaScript, you know it's called ends with, not end with. Saving now allows Wonderland Editor to just recognize this, reload, and you just saw the tab, uh, the console switch. It reloaded automatically because we still had the quest active. It was able to reload the browser, and now we have no longer any errors left. We, If we scroll up, we still see the old errors, but now everything is great and fine. So I'll switch to the quest view here real quick. Uh, enter VR, and now notice, okay, if I move these close to each other, then it should not be, uh, and it's not uh, outputting anything to the console. But we're still way too far away from the wall, so I'm gonna just go switch to Wonderland Engine real quick again, select the player, move the player closer to the wall, save, and then switch back to our remote debugging. If you have the following settings selected in the preferences, in views preferences, that is package changes when switching to another window, then you will not have to hit control shift P ever again, which means that it will automatically package now if you switch back to the remote debugging console. Now we are close enough to the wall to actually grip onto one of these. So if we just move closer, then it should be, and it is, uh, overlapping with grip. It seems to be overlapping pretty much all the time, but that's just because the bounding box or bounding sphere is large enough to like already trigger very, very early. Now, this is great. I'm really excited about this game already. And the next thing that we're going to do is just detect the button press of the, of the trigger and then make sure that the player gets moved whenever we move the controller. There's a little bit more coding work, so I'm gonna set aside the Oculus Quest for a second 
Now, since the quest is still semi-active and I can go ahead and uh, I can just disable the proximity sensor here, that allows me to make changes and it'll just keep overlapping with the grid. So going back to the code, what we'll want to do is we want to store the overlapped grip. So this overlapped grip is comp. That means in any grip event that we might be handling, we can use the overlapped grip. We also need to make sure that if there are no overlaps, we set the overlap grip to null to make sure that we reset it and we know that the controller is currently not overlapping any grips. We also need to make sure to initialize this. And now is where I'm going to explain what the difference is between init and start because init allows you to just initialize any property that you might use in your custom component, while start allows you to access other components. And this ensures that these other components init functions have already been called. So if you need to use any properties from this collision, then try to get them in start always get components in start because there you can then go ahead and use this collision group, for example, uh, to access the collision group or this collision active to set or to enable and disable the component. Now that we have the overlapped grip, we can go ahead and handle the grip event. We notice that uh, we just got an error here. That's not a problem. That just happens because the soft reloading feature in Wonderland Engine is still very experimental. If you have not uh, activated the soft reloading feature, then that error won't happen for you anyway. So next, we will want to add an event listener to our session to understand when the trigger button is pressed. 